Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mac here. Welcome back to another new video. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Mac setup script that I've been working on. Okay, so uh, a few little pieces of uh, maintenance before we get started. Uh, I wanted to mention that I've actually created a, a playlist for this uh, series here. Right now, there's only three videos on it. Um, you know, and I'm not intending to make a ton more, but it seemed to make sense to uh, kind of separate these out and give them their own playlist. So you can access that here. Uh, and there'll be a link in the description to that. Uh, and also, if you're interested in getting like any more recent updates to the script, I actually did go ahead and um, make my, my uh, Git repository public. So uh, you can access that from the, another link in the description, and it'll just have all the most up-to-date changes that I've been making to the script. That exists. Uh, if you're interested, check it out. But let's go ahead and get into the video. So uh, we're going to be using uh, Vim today just just because we can. If you're not familiar with the series, it actually would make sense to go back and watch at least the most recent uh, video. But basically the idea is I've got kind of an abbreviated version of what we're working on here. Uh, we have a script that originally started as a way to install all of the apps that I use. We would use Homebrew and then Casks and then also this Mac App Store replacement to just install all of the apps that I use on my computer all at once the first time I set set everything up. And that's mainly what we've done so far, but I got a little bit into something a bit more interesting with changing a few system settings via the same script, which is pretty cool, but I think we can tap into that a little bit more because if you use a Mac, there are these interesting files that store the majority of the settings for your system that are all kind of in one folder and you can edit them pretty easily on the command line. So in theory, we could set up all of the kind of customizations that we want to make to a system on the command line. And this isn't super new. You can find dot files and things like that on GitHub if you're interested, or there's even apps that you could download. I'm not sure of the name of any of them. I'll try to find one and link it in the description if you're interested. Uh, but I like the idea of going through and putting these all into a script so that one, I know how to do it, and two, just so that, you know, I, I click one button and everything happens. The more that I can put into this one script, the happier I am, kind of. That's what we're going to be doing in the video today is just going through and changing as many system settings as we can. So the first thing we actually need is a finder window. And uh, you're also going to want to have Xcode installed ideally for this. Um, not just like the Xcode command line tools, but actual like real Xcode. It's a bit of a large download, but y you kind of need it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our home directory. This would be slash user slash your username. Uh, you can also get to that by just going to like your computer, Mac HD, and then users in your username. Or you could do command G or you could, you know, search and just go to the, th there's a lot of ways to get this. It's not really important. It's where your terminal opens up. It's the default home directory. You need to be there. All right. So once we're in this directory, we want to go into the library folder and then we're going to go into the preferences folder. And then what you'll see here is we have a lot of files that all look kind of the same. They all start with com.apple.something.plist. And a lot of these are like third party apps, but there are also quite a few files that Apple puts here. Anything that's com.apple.anything are going to be preferences that are actually on your computer. And so I'm just going to open one of these up really quickly so that we can mess with it. Uh, so what I'm looking for is com.apple.doc. And as you might guess, this is going to be a plist file that controls all of the preferences for our doc. Uh, but there's also files like you could find com.apple.finder or we could find com.apple.itunes. There's really a ton of these files. So if you've never looked through them before, the best thing you could probably do is just kind of scroll through this list of preferences files and see what you maybe want to edit. I'm just going to go through one to kind of show you how the process works and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to find that com.apple.doc file again and this is kind of the best way that I've found to go through and find the files is just search for them, uh, navigate to the folder and then search for them. Uh, and then if you double click it will launch the file in Xcode and we can go ahead and get started here. So if we look through this file, you can see we have a number of settings here. Uh, and these are, of course, all settings that are going to affect the OSX doc. 
So there's a few things that you need to know. Basically, we have uh, a line here, and this first in this first column or first row, I think it's column. In the first column, we have the name of the setting that we're trying to change. And we'll just focus on this auto hide one, for example. So the setting that we're changing is auto hide. And this is gonna be the functionality, of course, to hide or show the dock. Uh, and then we have a type indicator here. Uh, and this indicates how we're changing the setting. Uh, it looks like most of what we have here are Boolean, string, and number. And these are three kind of different types of variables that are available in a lot of programming languages and are also being used by these plist, plist files. So uh, just really quickly, uh, a string is just a any character. So, um, you know, if we take a look at where we, up here where it says region, it's a string type of setting. And we could, in theory, type in any letters here. And as long as those letters have a value, it will change. So, you know, in theory, we could change the region to like, I don't really know country codes, but I assume SP would be like Spain or FRS France. I'm pretty sure that's right. You know, and, and we could kind of change, you can kind of see how that starts to work. Uh, we have another option here, which is number. And this is just a value, just a value. Um, you know, so for example, this expose animation, we're just literally putting in a number in seconds that that animation will lack. So th I think that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and then, so all that you really need to remember is that Boolean is an operator that basically just means yes or no, or like true or false. It's, e it's just an off or on switch. In the case of like this auto hide setting, we have it set to no. Our only other option would be to have it say yes which I think should make sense. I'm gonna go through and kind of show you how I have set up my uh, settings. I don't actually have the default to look at, but I'm just gonna hit on all of the settings that I like to change. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna open up the terminal and we're gonna look at that install script because of course we actually want to write these changes into our, uh, our file here. So let's uh, scoot that over. I'm gonna create a new line here. And if we wanna write to this file, it's pretty easy. Uh, we have to type in defaults write, and then we can type in com.apple.doc. And macOS is smart enough to know what we're trying, what we're aiming to do is edit this com.apple.doc file. Then we hit space, and we can change the settings that we want. So I'm going to take a look at like expose animation duration. Expose animation duration. And you want to type this uh, exactly as it is here. So it's not actually the worst thing in the world to just kind of, hopefully, to just copy and paste it in uh, if that's what you want to do. Uh, and then what we have to do is we have to specify what we're wanting to use for this middle column. So in this case, we're using a number. So I'm just going to type dash number. And then we have to add our actual value. Um, so I'm just going to actually set this to zero if it'll let me, the lowest value it'll let me use. Ideally, I would want no animation whatsoever. And that's just a personal preference. Um, this number is a value in seconds. So if you want an animation to take a second, type in one and your animation is going to be a second. I want animations to go as quick as possible. I'm just going to make it zero. Uh, let me go ahead and remove a couple of these lines here, try to make this easier. I'm actually just going to remove everything here if I can. Okay, so that all we're looking at is just our new files. And usually the way that I would set this up is I would come right above our new line and I would do a comment, which you do by doing the hashtag. And then I would just say kind of in plain English what we're doing. So we're setting, uh, we're gonna say expose animation to zero. And what this is gonna do is by having a comment explaining pretty simply what we're doing and then having the actual uh, command to do it, it's gonna make sure that if anyone else looks at the file or if I look at the file later, I can always kind of tell what's going on really easily. Uh, one other thing you can do with this particular line is you could do uh, replace that number in the middle column with INT. And this is an abbreviation for integer, which will still be referencing number. I'm just looking at my uh, my actual script and I have them all written as uh, integers uh, rather than dash number. So we're just going to pretend that I told you to do it dash int to begin with. Uh, we could also mess with uh, magnification. Actually, one thing I should mention, if you're just going through and playing with this file uh, just to see what happens, which I do recommend, one thing that you'll have to do a lot of is open up a, like a, a terminal or use something like Alfred to kill the dot. So if you're using Alfred, you could use, use this kill workflow to kill 
kill the dock. Or if you don't have that, you could just open up a terminal window and do kill all. And that will restart the dock and uh, apply any changes that you've made. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead. Uh, here we have the magnification setting we want to change. So I would do dock magnification off. And then we can do defaults right com dot apple dot doc uh we're gonna have the name of our setting magnification and then we're gonna have the i'm gonna let's see if we can kind of make these a little more easy to look at there we go so then we're gonna have the type of setting that it is it's a boolean setting so again that's just true or false or yes or no i'm gonna type in bool to reference that uh just dash bool and then we're just gonna type no uh next thing i want to do i want to show hidden files so the way that you would do that is you would say default write com dot apple dot doc and then we would say show hidden it's a string um, so then we would type dash string to reference that and then we just want to set this to yes and it may not make sense that sometimes when we have yes in one column or no in one column it's a boolean type some and then sometimes it's a string type um i'm just doing this exactly as it is in the preference file so that we don't change anything in theory you could change a lot of these settings and it wouldn't make much of a difference but i just don't want to take a risk and accidentally change something that's gonna <laughs> break something important especially while i have a screen recorder on <clears throat> that's just not really how i want to operate uh, and again the other thing i want to point out is just to make this super clear all we're doing with this line of code is editing a line in this preference file. So default to write com.apple.doc is just saying, hey, we're editing this Apple plist file. Show hidden just means we want to go to this row, show hidden. String is making sure that we're using the string type. And then this value here is the value that's going to end up in this column. So I'm just going to go through and edit a whole lot more of these. Then once you have that file set up, you could write it. And if you weren't watching the last video, the way that you would actually, uh, this is driving me crazy a little bit here. Okay, so the way that you would make this into a file that can actually be edited is by taking this install file and running it through the chmod program. Um, so you would just type in something like chmod plus x and then the name of your file, uh, which in this case is just install. That'll turn it into an executable file and then we can run that file. So let's uh, see how good we did here. I'm just gonna change a lot of these settings and then we'll see if we can change them back with our script here kill all doc and you'll notice our doc is on the bottom of the screen it's not hiding the way that it should one other thing oh i totally forgot to mention this at the bottom of your script you want to actually add those commands to restart the doc so that you don't have to do it manually uh so what i'm going to do is whoo i totally screwed that up i'm gonna erase that you would want to add that kill all doc command to restart the doc and then we'll right quit those changes oh and that's another thing to mention even once you've made a script like this executable you can still go back and edit it without having to worry about anything so just keep that in mind um so we have a script and what should happen whenever we run the script is our doc is going to hide itself it's going to move to the right and a couple other things uh and we'll see how we did so there's a few different ways you can run the script you can open up the finder and navigate to where you've actually stored the file in this case that is right here this install file and you can actually just double click on it uh or you could also just do dot slash, uh, make sure you're in the actual directory where the file is, and then you could do dot slash install, or whatever you've named your file, and run it. And in theory, our doc should now be on the right side of the screen, and it should automatically hide and show with basically no delay when we hover over it. So yeah, I think it's working, I think we're happy. But anyways, th there's a lot of these to go through. Um, you know, be careful so that you don't accidentally mess anything up but i feel like this is a pretty safe thing for people to do if you do it with a little bit of common sense and you'll probably be good to go so there's going to be a few more videos in this uh series uh, i just wanted to show you really quickly i've been working on this script quite a bit recently uh and if we bend into the install script you can see it's actually gotten a bit more complex there's a lot more stuff going on than originally we're doing a lot more than just installing apps or even changing the preferences you can see here these are all of the preferences that i've changed up here at the top of the script um, but there's a lot more to go through specifically we're going to talk about uh, a way that i've found to actually put in preference files for like different shells or different apps like Atom or Vim or that kind of thing. They all use these dot files, which are very, very easy to edit in this type of environment. So that should be cool. But that is all for this video. And I will see you in the 
next one as soon as I get back to the normal shell. There we go. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.